Hi, my name is Trinity Watts. I'm a student at the University of Oklahoma, and I'm also a U.S. Army ROTC cadet. In our class, one of our assignments we're doing right now is writing a book review over, we're not writing, we're making a video, over Emotional Intelligence 2.0. It's by Travis Bradbury and Jean Greaves. It kind of just talks about emotional intelligence, the four quadrants of it, and some strategies to help you deal with things you may not be so good in. It also offers a test at the end, which helps you better understand what you could use some more work in. So, to start us off, what is emotional intelligence? Well, I would like to say that it is self-awareness tied into social awareness, which you use to self-manage your life and also your relationships. So it's kind of just the all four quadrants tied in together, which is really helpful because this book very thoroughly explains all of those things. So self-awareness is just basically knowing about yourself and your emotions and like how you would react in certain situations and like knowing your strengths and your weaknesses and like which ways they affect other things and other people. So I'm going to give you three strategies which can kind of help self-awareness if you're not so good in it. So one of them is to quit treating your feelings as good or bad. It's also to stop and ask yourself why you do the things that you do. And it is also to spot your emotions in books, movies, and music. So I'm going to explain uh, just those a little bit more. So to quit treating your feelings as good or bad. This is something that I actually do a lot. Like certain emotions shouldn't be just good or just bad. It's um, more of just something that you need to process as they come. Like, for instance, in the book, it labels guilt. Like most people think guilt is bad and excitement is good. So you push guilt to the side and focus in on your excitement for a thing. But what you really need to do is just fill out each and every emotion. Um, you need to stop yourself and ask why you do the things that you do. So, like, let's say if you're just feeling like a fiery sense of anger about something. Instead of just being angry and lashing out, what you should do is just stop and take a second and think, what is the root of this anger? Where is it coming from? And, uh... Why does it actually make you feel that way? Like, not necessarily just what it is, but why does it make you feel it? And the last one is spot your emotions in, like, books, movies, and music. So, I listen to a lot of music. And sometimes I do find myself like, okay, this song is me. Like, it's exactly like me, and then it's my favorite song for a while until something else is more exactly like me. So, instead of just, like, listening to the music, you should, like, take the music and process it and kind of figure out like, why does this music relate to me so much? Like, why do I resonate with it so much? Like, why is this particular thing so important? So that's kind of just like what self-awareness is. It's just like knowing what, like being able to identify a particular emotion and why that particular, and why that particular emotion is that way. The next one is actually self-management. So this is taking your self-awareness and using it to aid in making changes into your daily life, like being aware of your emotions and being able to channel them into something else. So like in the book, I gave an example of a surfer dude who was riding the waves and um, a shark came along, which Obviously, he was very frightened, but um, instead of being frightened, what he needed to do was like take that emotion and channel it into determination to get him out of the situation that he's in, which he did end up doing. So he ended up staying alive because if he realized that like if he was just going to stay scared, then he was just going to die. And, like that was it. So he didn't do that. Now, something else or like the... um. The three strategies, if you're not so good in self-management, like what you can do to help yourself out. So for this one, it's a uh, create an emotion versus reason list, count to 10, and sleep on it. 
So emotion, emotion versus reason. So I kind of think this means like, if you're feeling something, what is a logical reason as to why you're feeling it? Like, take that reason, figure out something purposeful you can do with it and that you can use it for. And uh, kind of like weigh out emotions and their consequences, which I do this a lot too, and make a pros and cons list. This isn't necessarily emotion and then reason, but I feel like with a lot of my decisions, well, not feel, with a lot of my decisions, I make a pros and cons list that way I can try to because like in the book it mentions a lot that like humans are emotional creatures so in order to not make decisions based off of emotion I make pros and cons list which is just pure logic also number three of the ones I was going to discuss is sleep on it I do sleep on decisions like after I make my pros and cons list, I go to sleep and then I wake up and see if I still feel the same. And a big one, like my biggest self-management tool I could possibly ever give anyone, count to 10. Sometimes I do feel myself getting very angry and I don't like being an angry person. So what I do is I pause, I count to 10. If that doesn't work, then I pause, count to 10 again and step away and then just take a break and breathe it out. It sounds really simple, but it, like, it does wonders for me just to count to 10. Because chances are, it's not that serious. And you need to be able to just like pause, take a deep breath and rethink your emotions so that you can not do something with adverse consequences. Like a lot of the times if you act out of anger and you lash out, it's just not good. So just be calm and collected whenever you're making a decision. So the next one would be social awareness. Now this is a really big one, especially like in a lot of fields because you do need to be able to read people. A lot of times people don't always wanna talk about or say exactly what they feel about something. So you should be able to read people and know when it's a good time to say something or when it's a good time to do something. And um. Because, like, yeah, people aren't going to explicitly tell you their emotions. And you need to be able to empathize with them as well. So, three things about this, if you're not very good at it. I would say is to watch body language. Um, like, do a full body assessment of people from facial, like, facial expressions to their toes. Like, just really read people. Another one would be uh, to be aware of, like, cultural and social norms. Because... Sometimes someone might be acting a certain way, but it's just because that's like, that's the setting for it. Um, and third, go people watching. I, I actually do this a lot. Like just sit there and just see what people do. Sometimes you can even try to guess and predict their emotions. It's the same thing. But even like you can predict their emotions and like, um, well, not necessarily their emotions, but you can predict their actions and how they're going to react to certain things, which helps with social awareness a lot you just watch others and just kind of see how they'll do but uh, in the book it listed an example of like a waitress which i've been a waitress before so this is true and like some of my friends are waitresses and stuff but it's like if you walk to a table I, there could be three different types of tables each person or each group of people they're going to just be sitting there and they're going to just be eating their food and their goal is to eat pay and leave but some people, they want to be alone. Some people, they want to talk to you. And some people, they just want a polite service without small talk, which is, you know, exactly what the book says. But um, you should be able to, well, you shouldn't necessarily be able to, but it'd be really helpful to whenever you can know each group of people. Like, especially in the restaurant business, when your pay is depicted off tips, you need to be able to read people and know what they want, which a lot of good waitresses can do. Um, relationship management. So this is about like relationships take work and they need to be navigated properly and with care. Like sometimes it can be easy in the beginning, but as you get to better know a person, it's more about conscious decisions and active efforts to keep your relationship afloat and going well. Like you need to be able to know that person. They need to know you and you guys need to both be able to communicate with one another. So for this one, 
Yes, I talked about like, you're gonna use your self-awareness to judge how your actions might affect others and their needs. Um, so be open and curious, build trust, avoid giving mixed signals and only get mad on purpose. I listed four for this one because relationship management is really important. So be open and curious. Like sometimes people aren't gonna wanna talk about their lives, but ask, ask questions. Get to know a person. That way you can understand and know like their wants and their needs. Um, and be open, like be, people are gonna be more willing to tell you things about them and allow you to get to know them if you, they can also get to know you. Um, build trust. If someone can't trust you, they're not gonna tell you anything. Like if the minute that someone tells you a secret, you go around and you run and tell everyone, even if it's not a big one, just something small, you need to be able to build trust with people, you know? Um, avoid giving mixed signals. This is a big one too. You can't say one day that, okay, you can't say something and then do something else. Your actions and your words need to directly align with one another. So if you say you love someone and then you go out and, I don't know, you slash your tires or something. You probably don't love them all that much because it's a very expensive fix. <laughs> um, only get mad on purpose. I think this goes hand in hand with the self-management thing. Um, take a deep breath. Take a second. Figure out your emotions before you say something you don't mean. Because once you say something, you can't take it back. The other person can forgive you, but they're gonna remember what you said and you're gonna remember what you said and you guys are both gonna remember how you felt. So it's best to just take a second, breathe, and think before you speak. Now, to get into my personal scores, I'm gonna actually pull them up. So, personal, okay, so the two personal competence scores, self-awareness and self-management. And self-awareness, I got an 85, which is my lowest score, which is why the self-awareness ones really resonated with me because I realized a lot of them, you know, some of those things, like they're really close to what I was saying. Like one of them in self-awareness, it was like you, like uh, you can tend to like give yourself like a lot of tasks just to feel content and not like actually deal with things. And I do that sometimes. Um, self-management, this, I got a 99, this is my highest score, but it makes a lot of sense because I do try to make sure that I, like, I work on myself and I think about what I'm doing before I actually do it, you know? Um, so my two social competence scores, social awareness, I got a 90, and relationship management, I got a 91. So in my lowest score, I am going to take exactly what I like mentioned earlier, those three, I'm gonna work on those a lot. Like um, the quit treating feelings as good or bad, stop and ask yourself why you do the things you do and spot your emotions. And number one, I do the putting my emotions into categories a lot. So I'm gonna work on not doing that. Um, and spotting my emotions in like books, movies, and music. I already do this and I already reflect on it. Like that's probably one of the reasons why I like driving so much. So I'm gonna do that as well. Like, you know, continue to do that. And then stop you and ask yourself why you do the things that you do. I do take time to reflect on the emotion. Like, um, okay, so if something causes an emotion or reaction out of me, I do take time to figure out the root of what that action was but a lot of the times I don't figure out why that action made me feel that way so I know the what but not the why so I'll focus more on figuring out the why and lastly um how does this affect myself and my officer life so being self-aware would be really really important as an officer because I do need to understand my strengths and my weaknesses so that I can better understand other social situations so what I'm going to just do is work on my self-awareness. That way, I'll be able to identify and understand my own strengths and weaknesses so that I can better understand the strengths and the weaknesses of my soldiers 
and how to like if I don't know myself I can't know them so I'm going to figure out more on knowing myself and that way I can know them whenever the time comes for that like that way I'm able to reflect and empathize and you know do that with them so that is how this book affected me and my leadership because I actually learned a, <laughs> I learned a few things about myself while reading this book so I'm going to take those into account for the future but overall I would like to say that I really enjoyed reading this book I like emotional intelligence I feel like it is one of the most important things like knowing people and knowing what they're going to do and what they're not going to do like as a leader you do have to understand others to lead others which is why I think emotional intelligence is important because if you're not empathetic, no one's gonna wanna come to you and talk to you. So you need to be able to know your soldiers as well as knowing yourself. Thank you.